Hello. Glad you're here. It's a beautiful spot. I'm sitting by a river at Provo Canyon in Utah. And I thought this was a perfect place to talk to you a little bit about um, rivers and bridges. As you can see, I'm the troll under the bridge right now. It's kind of cold here, but really beautiful. Oh. So I was just uh, reading a study the other day that was showing how hypnosis affects your brains and they put people's brains on an fMRI to look at what part of their brain they used when they were doing hypnosis. The way they did it was they took three different groups of people and asked one group to uh, pretend that their left arm was paralyzed, that they couldn't move it. So they had them visualize and pretend that it was paralyzed. Another group didn't do anything. They just let them be the control group so their arm was not paralyzed. And then the third group, they had them hypnotized to believe that their arm was paralyzed. Now the important thing about this study is showing the difference of if we think about something on a conscious level and we imagine it to be true and we even visualize it to be true and the difference of how our brain perceives it when we're in hypnosis and in an actual trance state. So that's why I found this pretty interesting. So then they put the people in the fMRI to look at their brain and the group that did nothing, when they asked them to lift their left hand, they saw that this particular part of their brain lit up. Then the group that was pretending and visualizing that their left arm was paralyzed. They had asked them to lift their arm and of course they could lift their arm and the same place in their brain lit up on the scan. Then the group that was hypnotized to believe that their left arm was paralyzed, when they asked them to try to lift it, they couldn't lift it, even though they were trying, but a totally different part in a completely different area was lit up. And that's pretty interesting because it shows that, you know, you might visualize and you might write affirmations, you might hope and wish and dream and do all the things you can do to get your brain to be convinced that something's happening such as abundance or making a big change in your life, getting rid of a bad habit or overcoming um, some shyness or whatever it is. But the difference is when you use hypnosis and you're actually using a deep trance state, your brain does it in a totally different way. And I don't think we understand exactly how it happens, but we do know from this scan that your brain uses um, a different area, a different region, and probably an entirely different set of neural networks and pathways to achieve something that the brain then tells the body is indeed true. Does that make sense? So how does this apply to having, let's say, a miraculous healing? If you want to do something to get rid of a headache or you want to get rid of IBS, which has a tremendous success rate with hypnotherapy, or you want to get rid of back pain, well, all of your wishful thinking, your wonderful self-talk, your affirmations, your visualizing are all great. Except what if it takes this other unknown part of your brain and this function of your brain that you just don't quite understand that you can only access in deep trance. And when that happens, the brain creates a belief that's indeed true and it takes that belief and sends it to the body in the same way that... Uh, oh, in the same way that might happen when you're taking a placebo for something that creates a miraculous healing. When you take a placebo and you believe that something is happening, your brain accepts it without any reservation or hesitation. It believes that that's going to happen and that's going to heal your pain, get rid of your headache, get rid of your back pain, cure your IBS. So hypnosis is responsible for a lot of miraculous healings and this could be one of the reasons. If you have not gone into deep trance and you want to learn how to do it, it's not difficult. It just takes a little bit of practice. There's something called the relaxation response. Herbert Benson from Harvard Medical School found that this relaxation response is something that's much more than just relaxing your body. It's kind of a switch that the brain has and that switch when it uh, switches over is that deep trance state and things start to change. So you might want to learn how to get into deep trance. You know, it's a matter of practice and getting your body to relax more and more each time. But once you learn how to do that, once you have the switch, you can use it any time. So if you're laying in bed and you have insomnia and you can't sleep, all you need to do is go into that state. Use the image that represents your deep trance state. Use the words or the triggers that put you there. Do the breathing that takes you down and you'll know when you're getting into that trance because things change. Your perception, your visuals, your sensations, everything changes and it's really a good feeling because it shuts your body off, it releases all the tension and stress and then you have a chance to guide and direct your body and your brain to where you do want it to be rather than what you don't want it to be. It's really simple and you know it really is free unless you buy my CDs and my videos, otherwise it's free. But if you need some help and you 
want to be guided by an expert and do it in a way that you know has been tested and proven, then you can get some of the CDs that I have and get results even faster. Well, it's been really exciting being here with you. Trust me, it has. Lovely river, living under a bridge. It's my new thing. See, here's my bridge. <laughs> yes, indeed, I've, I've sold out. I've cashed in the farm, sold the farm, bought the farm. What is the phrase? <laughs> I'm now living under a bridge. Come see me sometime. Bye-bye.